Grady, good to have you, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad that, that we were able to make it happen. Yeah, I'm honored. Stoked. I, I've, I've checked out a bunch of episodes. I'm a fan. The honor, the honor is all on I me. Mean, I appreciate your kind words, though. Thank you, sir. I, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to have you on, you know. It's Likewise. mutual admiration here. Where are you at? Where are you located? Orange County, California. Oh, nice. We're right down the road. We could have done this in person. All right. Well, I'll, I'll meet you over at your place. Uh, where I should yeah, shut this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Cool. <laughs> are you are you uh, in LA or? Yeah, uh, okay. we're, we're in Echo Park. Very nice. This is Mackenzie. You can come say hi. Sp- special guest appearance. Hey, Mackenzie. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. And and, That's and, our child. and we got That's we dog. got the we got the dog here. Yeah. Yeah. Dog, is, doctor, just... like daughter, but doctor. You know. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that's good you gotta you gotta have those names for those pets it's very it's crucial <laughs> totally <laughs> super super crucial kind of thing oh yeah over there by echo park dude oh jumping on that freeway oh man it's 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 pretty it's it can get pretty intense are you talking about the 110 yeah the 101 is pretty chill but the 110 i think was like an old horse freeway like that's why the, the um entrance and exit ramps are like seven feet yeah you like pull up and then everyone's going like 75 past you and you have like one second to get your car to get my 96 Toyota Previa to 90 miles an hour. It, it, it'll get there. It'll get there. Yeah, it's <laughs> it, it's it, it's pretty it's pretty crazy to, yeah. to, to be jumping on. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, boy. I mean, but bless you for doing it, man, because that's that's a that's a rough deal sometimes to be to be getting in- it done. I grew up in New Jersey, so driving out here is a dream. New York and New Jersey, everyone's flipping you off every two seconds. So I'm like, this is nice. So people, people wait for you. It's chill for me. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can only imagine driving in New York. I haven't been to New Jersey, but is it is it like is very congested like uh, like New York is? It's congested, and then we were just there visiting my family, and the cops are nuts. They're like they have nothing better to do, and they're all just like every tree they're hiding behind and so like if you go one mile over you're screwed but also everyone's just really like funny aggro like you stop at a four-way stop and you're gonna get flipped off by somebody you know everyone's just like so upset and (laughs) yeah it's really funny yeah those four-way intersections I feel like because I'm 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 trying to be on the ball with it I'm like okay you were first you go and then you go I go and then sometimes people just aren't paying attention and you're like, all right, like, let's, let's do this. You know, yeah, it's, you it's your sides. turn. Yeah. You get people and, flowing through and you get people like way too hesitant. Yeah. Oh, that's, oh man. But, that's, <laughs> but uh, uh, New Jersey, that's, that's where you, you're originally from. That's where I grew up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was the, what was the music scene like out there when, when you were a kid? Like white boy uh reggae bands sick yeah that's that that's good for seeing cover bands it's the boss yeah. dude yeah it's the boss it's the boss out there yeah he really is i don't i'm not i'm not really a big fan of him what do you what, what do you think what's your take on bruce springsteen um i have an interesting uh path with him with my fandom of him I hate you worked for him so he's actually your boss was it the yeah he's actually my boss <laughs> I I didn't like him all growing up because it was like all my friends moms were like hot for Bruce and I was like why would I like that it's like the least cool thing ever and then and I just heard like the the big tracks like all the you know horn section and I was just like this isn't my thing and then when I started dating Mackenzie, she was like, dude, you're from Asbury Park or near there. Like, that's your guy. And I was like, no, not my thing. And then she showed me the first album, which I'm forgetting. Greetings from Asbury Park. And he's, it's very like Dylan, like it's very like rambling long and, and, and more raw and less, less horns. And I was like, less big band feel. And I was like, oh, I could fuck on this. And then... <laughs> And then I got into like a couple tracks off that and then slowly bought into a few, a few singles off each album or a few tracks off each album, um, like Hungry Heart, you know, a couple of just undeniable 
bangers. So I have my, I have my um, things that I've cherry picked from his catalog and I can do a decent Bruce voice. So now I'll do whenever I'm like with some people that I want to annoy, I'll do the, the nine minute version of Thunder Road, um, which I know every word to now somehow. I can do that pretty quick though. But yeah, me and Mackenzie will do that. That's about it. That's about as my full. So I was like, when I lived there, it's kind of the same with Nashville. I lived in Nashville for eight years and I was like, country's the lamest shit on the planet because it was like Broadway, downtown and like new age country. And just like, I saw how cheap it was, the industry and the business. It was like the worst I've ever seen the music industry was in country music because it's so like copy paste songwriter like money machine. It's like worse than pop stars. And so I hated it. And then I moved to California and everybody was like West Coast, like cowboy, like, you know, <laughs> Graham Parsons, Flying Burrito Brothers and all this stuff. And I was like, country is awesome, man. And so it's funny. You like leave where the thing is shoved down your throat and you can appreciate it. Yeah, that's it's good to get some distance between it to really totally. appreciate it. Totally. And and uh, Bruce will be on this podcast, so uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that too. Yeah, totally. Actually, yeah. yeah, it's uh it's tomorrow, so I will let him know. Oh, I'll actually play this clip. So, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Fellow New Jersey, New, New Jersey man. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, he's he's uh tell him tell him uh, once you dig in, there's some good stuff there, but I didn't like it off the top. Okay. All right. I will. I will. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it right right down the pipe to him. But uh, Perfect. Were, were, was it was there kind of kind of a places to go as as a kid to like go see shows, or was it kind of just like um, uh, I had to go somewhere else to go see these kind of things? Asbury Park had some good had a scene. It was um there was like a little punk scene, there was a rock scene, and there's like the Stone Pony where Bruce Springsteen like came up. So I would play there on like Sunday showcases. And um, there was, there's a couple cool spots, but now it's, it's a small town. So it's getting gentrified really quick. Um, but I would go to, my dad would take me to like New York and Philly to see shows and stuff. Um, Cause we were right in between the two. So I would go more to see shows there, but um, yeah. Stone Pony was kind of it. The Saint. There's like a couple of little divey spots. I, my one of the bands I played in got banned from the Stone Pony, um, which is like the you say you're from New Jersey and people are like Stone Pony, and I loved it. My band got banned from the Stone Pony because we played a show there and they had no security and two girls were fighting in the front row and one girl smashed a bottle on the other girl's head in like classic Jersey fashion. And so we were about to walk on stage and we thought we were all cool. We were like 18. We had like a beastie boy song or something. We're like, it's time to walk on. And then cops pulled up and we're like, don't, don't play. And we were like, what? And then they ran in there and like broke these girls up. And there was like blood and girls on the thrown on the hood of the car and the girl who got the bottle smashed on her head sued the giant like lame oil corporation that owned the stone pony and owns half of Asbury park and said, she knew me, even though I, I don't know her. And so then they were like, fuck that guy. And my uncle owns a business on the boardwalk there. So, or rents a, you know, runs a business. So he would go pay his rent to that same like giant corporation. And he would go in and like one of my old band t-shirts and they'd be like, you can't wear that around here. <laughs> they'd be like, great. He's not a good guy. And then he's like, he's 18 and he's like not condoning any violence, but um, yeah, they just had it out for me and they wouldn't let me play anymore, <laughs> which was kind of sick. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, that's, that, that's good. You really said a reputation. He said, okay, I, yeah. I can't I can't be here anymore. I gotta go to Nashville. That was was that yeah. uh, I'm an I'm an outlaw in my own in my own city. I'm kind of like I followed in the footsteps of a Tony Soprano, you know. Sure, sure. Yeah. Stay I mean through, you're through the Italian New Jersey roots. It's good. You gotta you gotta be able to connect to those. And you you, yeah. you certainly have the with the stone pony. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so I mean you so originally from New Jersey and then was it directly to Nashville from there? Was it like, all right, I gotta, I gotta kind of get a change of pace. Yeah. I went to school for like audio engineering in Nashville and then I ended up switching and not doing that. But, um, and then, yeah, so I lived there and it was so cheap to live. So it was easy for bands to like live off of music and touring. Cause it was like $300 a month or something. And you, 
but it, that's also kind of its curse because it becomes like a party town where nobody really needs to work and so everybody's just at this it's like a Mackenzie called it like indie rock summer camp like every band could just go stay there forever and just like go to the same coffee shop and bars and never have to work um and it it, it kind of like doesn't push you because you're like just down to stay stick around and be stagnant so then I wanted to come to California for a long time and I I would visit for long periods of time and then once me and Mackenzie started dating I would stay out here for way longer and then that was just kind of like my last excuse I also grew up by the water so I wanted to get back to like a coast but I didn't want to go back to New Jersey so it was I was heading there anyway but Mackenzie was like the nail in the coffin like now I have an excuse to move so then I left Nashville. It's cool. It's a nice place, but it's like, um, yeah, it's just like kind of breeds, at least for me, just like being lazy, you know, <laughs> just not, not needing to move as much. Yeah. And not in like a good naturey present. I'm, I'm so present and I'm not pushing myself to like give into capitalism way. It was just like a, everyone's partying and not, doing shit way you know <laughs> yeah right. it's it's it, it is important to get a change of pace and you're you're definitely like all right fuck the east coast i'm done with nashville yeah and then, and then there's i mean you're gonna eventually move though i know i as as time will tell you're gonna go up north which would be nice so that'll be a good getaway yeah yeah you're mapping out my whole yeah i don't know i i like it here i could stay here but also who knows maybe i'll get priced out and have to move if rent gets too crazy we have a really lucky situation is the only reason we're still in echo park um but yeah i don't know i like it here i like i got i can go to the beach i got a good music community it's big enough to where you don't see the same three people every day um but it's small enough to where you feel like you have a community and there's like friends and and uh venues that you all gather at and stuff so yeah i like it here sure we'll see it seems It'll be a good. while before I carry on and get out of town, which is good. But the the only problem is that that uh, the freeway entrances. But besides totally. that, it seems yeah, yes, yeah. seems pretty cool. Seems yeah. seems seems like you got a good thing going there. Yeah, you're getting a couple fender benders. Other than that, it's great. What was your initial kind of spark of hey, I want to try music. I want to I, I want to do this. I have a, I have an interest in this. Um. My parents would make me take like lessons, but I was never really into it. And I feel like when I fell in love with it, it was maybe the sixth grade talent show. It was a mix of like, I think I fell in love with, I liked music, but I wasn't like pushing myself on my own at first. And then it was the performance aspect. So it was the sixth grade talent show performed Brain Stew by Green Day. It was electric. Um, totally, there wasn't a winner, but I, we would have, I think. Um, that was a big one. And then seventh grade, I don't remember what I played, but I remember I threw, it was like after school of rock was out and I threw my hat into the crowd and then did this. And I remember that being like hitting really well and just realizing how much I liked performing and playing shows. And then, um, and then it wasn't until like college that I, that I kind of started wanting to push myself in side of you know getting better at my instrument it was just kind of like oh i like writing songs i wrote a ton of songs in high school but it was all really simple and like on bass so it was kind of a slow growth but i think the performance aspect is what made me like the playing live shows is what made me really stoked on it at first so you were in a couple different bands in in your younger days just kind of just just playing around obviously getting kicked out of you know the spot of your yeah. of your hometown mm -hmm. yeah totally just being a recluse yeah classic <laughs> classic move but um at what point did you say all right i'm kind of done with being in bands i want to start my own thing so when i was ready to leave nashville i was i kind of was i was never the guy that could like run the whole session and home record myself the other bandmates i was in bands with would were kind of the leaders in that but i found a four track that I really liked tape machine. And, um, that kind of pushed me to be like, okay, I think I can start doing this on my own. Um, and I was kind of collaborating with Mackenzie. I've always, it was right around when we started dating 
I started recording my own stuff and she's always been on all the tracks and helping me write them and all that kind of stuff. But that's, I was at a garage sale in, in New Jersey and they had a bunch of CBGB's old shirts. And I was like, what's up? And they were being weird. And then I saw this four track. That's this one. Um, still, hold on. I'll grab it. Still have it though. I mean, Oh yeah. Thanks. I still practice it. Yeah. It's that one. Um, and it was used at, and then I found out that it was Hilly Crystal's house who owned CBGB's and was the founder. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was his four track. So, um, yeah, when I, and I got it for like 20 bucks or 15 bucks or something. So when I got that, that really inspired me. And I felt like it was like a little message to try doing it on my own. And so then I came out to California and, and with that four track, I started recording kind of my first stuff by myself. And that's when, that was probably like, early 2018 is when I started trying it on my own I wasn't like fuck being in bands I want I'm more, I need control it was just like exploration and wanting to get decent at recording on my own kind of led me to do some stuff by myself hmm. wow I mean that's that's pretty recently in the in the in the, in the grand scheme of things I mean 20, yeah. 2018 yeah totally yeah it hasn't been long that first, the very first song I made on that was the song "I'm Not Your Man," which is still like uh, one of the main ones that I we play and stuff. So it hasn't been. There's been one album, one EP, and that's it. And then I just finished a new record. But yeah, there's not a lot of whole. I haven't been doing it that long by myself. But it's cool because it's a different process and it's more free, freeing. I used to just like go into a studio with a band. This is like the first record I played, or the first couple songs I played, everything by myself. And even that first record, Getting Stranger, I did everything totally by myself. Mackenzie played some a couple of guitar parts and sang all over it. But um, it was like all me. And then I'm growing a little bit in this last one I just finished. I had Mark, who's my drummer in my band, play drums on the whole record. And I Mackenzie plays sax and guitar and sing a bunch. And um, I mixed it at a friend's house so it sounds better than just me mixing it. So I'm kind of like, slowly figuring out what process works for me as I go and, and letting it change every time. And that's part of like the growth of the project. I feel like is like not just the songwriting changing or the style changing, but the process of recording it and writing it is changing too, which is fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Constant evolution. Yeah. Keeps it fresh for me. Gets me like, you know, if I just went and tried to do the same thing over and over again, I would get super bored. So it's nice to, it's also nice learning that, as much as I like to do stuff all by myself, when it's really beneficial to bring in other people, like I got like Mark on drums sounds incredible compared to me, like playing a snare by myself. And then this guy, Daniel McNeil, who's mixing the record, it's just like elevates it so much. So it's cool, like finding out where I went wrong on the last record and could have ha asked for more help and made it better and trying to do that on the next one, you know? Right. Was it difficult to let go of having so much control over like how how it how you wanted it to sound or how you thought it should sound? Was that was it kind of a difficult step to get over? Yeah, I feel like I feel like I'm getting better at that just in general in life, like trying to at least like not being so attached to expectations. Um but it's also about finding someone that you like to work with that you trust, you know? There's a lot of people that I wouldn't be able to control wise mix my whole record with because I, I don't trust every move they're making is similar to what I would do or what I like. Daniel is someone who I think makes a lot of the same stylistic choices that I would make, but it's just actually a professional engineer. So he can make it, you know, it's like, there's cool DIY and then there's like, all right, you just did that really shitty, you know, You're like that just, that just doesn't sound good. So it, my stuff was teetering on that. I feel like at least in my head. So it's not hard to give up control when you trust the person you're working with. And like I said, just in general, like I've been like meditating a lot and trying to not be so attached to my expectations of anything of like where the project will go, what the songs should sound like, what they're going to do. You know, just like letting it go out and be like, okay, I'm not going to stress about what it does or judge it. Yeah. You know? Sure. Does, does meditation help? Yeah, totally. I think, uh, 
there's all different kinds, but they're all trying to get you to the same thing, which is to stop freaking out about your own individualness and your own, your own shit you have going on that you think is so important and realize the greater picture. And when you realize the greater picture and that you're a part of some way bigger thing, it's more powerful than just you. It takes a lot of pressure off you. And so it just, you freak out about less stuff during the day. Cause you're like, whatever, it's just the way it was supposed to roll. And it just takes the pressure out of like, I need this to work out or I'm not special or I, you know, it's just like gives you a better perspective to where you can just, you know, flow with stuff and try to make the best of it. Um, I got into, I did, I got, I got trained in transcendental meditation at David Lynch foundation by some friends. And I think that one's cool. Cause it's not a super organized thing. It's just like, if you can 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night, try to meditate and uh yeah it's cool for me works for me where did the uh where the the, the name strange come from how did how, how at, did you come up with that pseudonym? I, was at, I had a really good bagel in Asheville, um north carolina and i went into the bathroom and there was a nice painting and it it was signed by a guy with the last name strange and i was like that's cool. It was right when I was making the I'm not your man song and I hadn't put it out yet. And I was like, I might just go under Grady. And I've at first did just put it out under Grady because I didn't fully commit to strange. And then there was another like kid who raps that was named Grady. And so I was like, oh, everyone thinks I'm him and he's me. And so then I, then I was like, thought back on that really good bagel that I had. And I was like, let me do strange. So <laughs> because I'm different, you know, I was just like, I deserve it. I'm a little yeah. bit yeah, you're you're a you're man about town. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'll I'll get a bagel, then I'll go do something else. I'm I'm, I'm not. I'm weirder out. than the white rapper kid. I deserve to be great. Strange. There you go. Yeah. You should just take it anyways. Like, yeah, I'll just push him out. I'll yeah. just I'll just keep on doing my thing, and eventually he'll just vanish. But I liked it more too. It was just a little bit more memorable. You know, I, I don't think I had a strong enough thing going to just be Grady like Beyonce. And Beyonce is more interesting sounding than Grady. Grady, so I was just like, I don't know, felt right. Gave it a nice little, gave it gave it something that uh, rang rang true with me. Yeah, a good a good ring. Yeah, I feel like a lot of a lot more people are are doing the singular name now now more than ever. Yeah, it's nice. My it lends itself to lots of nicknames too. Like all the members of my band will just call it different things all the time. Like for a long time, it was groovy everyone calls me groovy so then it was groovy strange um and then grundis and then groban my the, mark the drummer he'll just call me then he always sounds so sad when he does this certain calls me this name but he's always like hey groban <laughs> I'm like, hey, man. uh so yeah there's a lot of we're, we're gonna make a shirt i think that says either I think Grumby, either Strange or Strange, I don't know, but Grumby Strange, and we'll have a little Gumby, but with hair, with long hair on it. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah. And then Grumby Strange. Yeah. I like if it. you can, if you can picture it. I don't know. Yeah. Say. No, I'm, no, I was, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, it's all the meditation. You're just ascending to another plane that well, I'm, I'm, I'm also trying to ascend to. I'm just downloading it, man. It's coming through me. <laughs> <laughs> the genius. I can't claim it. You know. It just, it just is. It just yeah. is. As am I. Sure. <laughs> I got the, I got the memo on the, on the striped shirt today too. I'm glad, I'm glad that we're both wearing it. I've yeah. Well, I, yeah. I had sent a few emails while mm. uh, leading up. Yeah. 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 And I, I usually don't open them. I say, mm, Groovy Strong. She was, I was like, all right. Did my publicist Groovy email you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He did. Yeah. Sort of finds like, hey, make sure that you wear. I was like, okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. I, I'm 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 easy. I'll just let it roll through or whatever. I should I should whatever start David Lynch would do. I should start emailing people as my manager and label and agent since I don't have any of those. I do it all myself. And I should they should be like Grooby, Grundis, and Groban. And they should <laughs> all Strange. And they should be emailing people because Strange sounds like a very strong business name. Sure. Yeah. That's it. You know, you have a strong business name when they're like, how do you, how do you pronounce it? Like, and that, that, that the strong is like, is it straight? No, it's not strange. It's strong. Yeah. And strong mm -hmm. is in the word is in the name. It's it's right there. It's just, yeah. it's a nice hearing point. I like it. Yeah. No, cool. that's good. 
it'll look professional. Yeah, yeah, you got my. I'll, I'll co-sign that. How how often do you do you play with the full band, or is it usually just kind of you and Mackenzie? No, we've never really done a show, just the two of us. I like full band. Um, I like loud shows. So, and especially the new music, like the last album, there was like a lot of like songs that we would jam on, Psyche, and this new album's a lot fast, kind of post-punk or punk. So I like playing full band. I'm kind of like, there's so much going on on the recordings that it's hard for me to even figure out, like, like they're so not singer songwriter vibe anymore or i guess i don't know if they ever were but that i don't even know there's a lot of songs i would have a tr- have a lot of trouble playing live just me and mackenzie some of them we could but i like them with a full band mm-hmm. so just- yeah we play around la a lot and then we play whenever people ask us to really we keep playing canned seltzer shows um white claw had us play a show with monster children which was really fun but then ranch rider can tequila asked us to play then white claw had mckenzie's band play which is i'm in that band too and then june shine kombucha had us play a show so it's a lot of canned seltzers and alcohols shows lately um up and down the southern that, california region that circuit it's it's hard to get into dude honestly the yeah. the canned seltzer yeah circuit um personally I've been I've been doing stuff for Bud Light Seltzer, uh, which is which is good, and truly asked me to do some stuff. And gonna hold off on that, yeah. See where they see if they catch on. Yeah, I mean we're kind of we're yeah, but the the Ken Seltzer kind of market is 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 really where you want to be. I'm just, I'm trying to break through. Yeah, we were saying our genre should be Ken Seltzer Core because we just keep playing those shows. That's awesome. Um, yeah. do you do you usually go for if you're drinking can seltzer i don't i don't even think so no it's just that they're offering us decent money more than they more than we would make just playing down the street um yeah so we just say yes because of that oh yeah we played the echo residency that was fun but I've been, we've been all over the place some of us are traveling so we haven't played a lot lately but most of our shows that we've been in town for happen to have been can seltzer core shows i like it yeah, I think it works. Can Seltzer Court. Yeah. A classic CSC. Exactly. Can Seltzer Court. Yeah. That should be on the shirt, too, dude. Do it. Yeah. Do another run of shirts with the Can Seltzer Court. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like the idea. Um, no, that's that's good though. How did you go about kind of piecing together your your band when you moved to california was it like starting i mean not starting from zero obviously because mackenzie was there but uh filling out the kind of rest of the parts and the people that you work with now yeah i feel like my um community first started with based off mackenzie's because she was in bands and played a lot and knew everybody at all the venues and all the other bands and so i most of my friends were through her when i first moved here and then i feel through surfing i met a lot of people um that also play music and then just through a bunch of mutual friends I have a bunch of friends that are drummers and a bunch of friends that are kind of bass players and so I just whenever I like to not put a bunch of pressure on people so I have like not like an A team B team C team but I have like friends that are the most committed that have the least going on and are the most down and that also vibe with me probably the most vibe with the music the most that are that play with me most of the time but then i like to have no pressure like hey if i get offered a tour or this or that and you don't want to do it i have three other drummer friends or a bunch of other people that can play bass so i have a really good thing going i'm stoked i like playing a lot with mark my friend mark who's on the record because he can just play really fast and does fun little creative fills and stuff um and He's the guy, he's in my Karma's a Gun music video. I don't know if you saw that, but it's like a mafia spoof, but he's one of the Marinara twins. So he plays in the band. And then Mackenzie was just natural because we play together all the time. Um, And I love her the way, I love her guitar leads that she writes. And she's just, she was in like a band that harmonized a lot. So I can't harmonize, but anything I write, she can immediately start singing like a third or a fifth harmony. And then my friend Jerry, I met through surfing. He plays keys and sings for in my band. And he does kind of like ethereal, trippy pedals and sings with the pedals. But he's like an angelic voice, crazy. He can harmonize with anything too. So it's cool. I just sing 
the only thing I can, which is the main melody that I wrote. And then they just like go off and sing crazy shit on top of it and make it sound way better. And then my friend Vaughn plays bass. He's, he's just, I met him because he asked me to play my first show when I moved here in like 2018. And he was friends with Mackenzie and some other people. And he just, I was like, sure, I'll play the show, but you need to be in my band because I'm on my band. And he was like, okay. And then since then, he's just played bass for me. So, uh, A little quick pro quo for that. Exchange exactly. For something else. Yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. Um, and going going back that uh the, the karma's a gun music video is really good i, I do re- and that'll be linked in the in the little description because everybody should go check it out it's really cool thick thanks a little, little bit of uh dramatic kind of vibes to it especially in the beginning you know so like, my, like, oh what, what 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 am i in for here it's really good. yeah my well i, I just wanted to spoof goodfellas and sopranos we had just finished sopranos in quarantine and i was like man i want to make a mafia classic uh but then my friend is a one of my best friends is a stunt man and so like a stunt double for people and so he was like let's do something and this was like a low budget super last minute so all i did was slam his head into the table and then he did the fake blood and then i fake lit him on fire but he he can do some crazy shit and he when he has more time he's like let's do we could do whatever you want. We could do like five people kung fu fighting you. We could do Filipino stick fighting, whatever you need. I can flip a motorcycle. Like he's crazy. So he just thinks it's funny when there's like a low budget music video, then with like a really impressive, like what would have been a $50,000 stunt. So like if anybody in the industry sees it, they're like, how the fuck did this like lo-fi dude just afford? Like, why did he put his whole record advance into one stunt but little do they know it was free but yeah he like <laughs> gets stoked on the idea of people being like where the fuck did that come from that was very professional and that guy just totally <laughs> died <laughs> you know That's that great. works out yeah you gotta you gotta pepper it in there you, you, yeah you gotta make sure people are paying attention you say hey did you just rewind it yeah check it again i know, yeah. I know you weren't paying attention to the song but that guy just died so you yeah. should check that out again yeah you know? <laughs> Yeah, you, you're either a fan of the song, you're a fan of the guy dying, whatever. Whatever right. it's it's for everybody. Yeah. Right. It's good for everyone. Playing playing all all bases. Yeah. Exactly. It's good. It's good. Um when um when you when you play and and record and, and piece together songs, how important is it to be to be present within all of those different steps? Um, yeah, it's funny because I, I had to like, I think I'm, I'm really good at the business side of like caring about and knowing how to roll out music on my own. But that part, I have to make sure like doesn't come into the recording process. I don't want the brain to come in of like, oh, you should make this, you should start singing quicker because people will like that more, you know, like that. I try to just like, trust whatever is coming out of me whatever I'm writing and just going with it and not comparing it to other bands or thinking about what might do well um and I I really like my process of being like home and alone and just the four track and I actually use GarageBand too um and just doing everything by myself that helps me just like get in a zone and get really excited and I'm just like a kid in the bedroom like really excited when I'm recording and that kind of helps me just like get the whole idea out and then later after it's mixed and everything I worry about putting it out and what I could do but yeah I try to stay super present when I'm recording at home the downside is like phone your phone you know I try to put it in the other room but when you do like go to check a text or something then you're like oh it's been an hour and I've been on Instagram and I could have finished that song but yeah for the most part I like my little zone over here and I just kind of can get in a good zone. And then live is one of those things where it forces you to be in your body, you know? Um, um, you, you know, you can't, you have to like connect with the people in front of you and interact with them and interact with your bandmates and interact with your own body the whole time. So playing live is an addicting thing because you're, you know, you don't have a choice but to like not be in your head. The more you can quiet your own shit and get out of your own head, the better things go. And so I think that's why I love surfing because you just have to be in your body. You're in like survival and 
go mode and then playing live you're like forced to interact with people and not be thinking about what is going on and then you know that's why all the things that are addicting are addicting yeah getting drunk makes you not think about shit all of it but yeah so i really like playing live um and it's not a challenge to not be present that's good has anyone ever come up to you after a, after a show to like discuss a certain song and like oh this really makes me think about this and like it, like this is what it's about for me and blah 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 like how how often are they kind of telling you what they think the song is about but that's not what the song is about at all <laughs> I feel like I have more people coming up to me to talk about what I said because I'm just like that's the other thing is I feel like there's this part of me that only comes out when I play live that's super just like no filter but in a in a good way like I feel like I just talk in between songs because I'm comfortable up there and I don't I'm not even necessarily thinking about what I'm saying and so people will often be like it's almost feels like you're like trying to do like a comedy show in between your songs and I was like I don't know it's just what I like to do but so people will off more often come and talk about random shit that I said I don't know if people are even paying attention enough to notice what I'm saying in the songs. Sometimes people will be like, you know, through different careers and different bands, people are like, I got this tattooed. And you're like, oh, crazy. That meant a lot to you. But that's cool. That's the job of a song. It's got its own life. I don't really care if people misinterpret stuff. I think I got to get better at like trusting that people will get what I'm saying. Like, I, I think often in my lyrics, sometimes I'll spell out too much what I'm saying. Whereas if I, I should leave more up to mystery because it's true, like I don't care what, as long as people take something from it or turn it into their own thing, it doesn't really matter to, uh, to me as long as it's out there doing its thing. So yeah, I don't know if anyone's ever come up to me and been like, man, this song about this and it's just totally not about that. People will just get the names of songs wrong. You know, like I have a new song, Avoid the Voice. And it's about like, what do you do all day to avoid the voice in your head? but Every time I've sent it to someone or talked about my album with someone, everyone gets it wrong. There's been like someone that heard it from afar and was been like, oh, I love that. What are you doing to avoid the voice? And I was like, what? And then somebody else was like, avoid, I really like avoid the noise. We should do a music video to avoid the noise. And I was like, fuck. And then the people are just constantly saying the wrong word. And I'm like, oh, that one's going to get so misunderstood. But <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, avoid the noise is really is really good. It's really, it's yeah. it's, it's, really, it's a really good one. Yeah. Avoid the void. Avoid the void. Yeah, literally every option you could think of has already been texted to me just via like close friends. So I'm like, oh no, hey, who's like, Lloyd? Why why are you trying to avoid? Yeah, <laughs> Lloyd Lloyd. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't have anything against Lloyd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's more you you trying to like explore like leaving it more open ended with within songs yeah or just trusting that people are going to get the point of a song without me having to like spell it for them and point them to it you know which is just like trusting your audience that they'll find you even if you're not like at all times being like this is what i'm about this is what i like are you getting it because i think often i don't know i'll just try to like no i don't even try to but my natural thing is to kind of over explain a little bit and then in hindsight i'll be like man i could have said that more but Mackenzie helps me with that. She's way better at like writing metaphors and um, trusting that people will get what you're saying without you spelling it out. So sure. she helps me out. Mm -hmm. What gets your creative gears moving in your mind? What 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 makes like a, like oh like that should I should do something with that idea? It often comes like after I'm just like not doing something like stillness like not when you're not stressed or trying to write shit or when you're not busy, a good idea will come. Um, we were talking about it the other day. It's like a lot of time it's like when you're like about to take a nap or something, you're like, fuck, I have a good song idea. But often I'll, I'll get a melody first or like one line with a melody. And then I'll just like sing it into my phone and later try to match it up with some chords. I rarely am like just jamming on guitar for fun. I'll pick it up when I have an idea and then start writing a song. And then I'll get stoked on that song and play only that song on guitar when I pick it up for like a month. But usually it comes like just melody in my head and that gets me psyched. Or I'll hear somebody say something 
like there's been like times where I'm just like in a room and some old guy says something and I'm like that was crazy I'm gonna write that down and then I'm gonna try to make that into a song and sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't sure um when you when you when you hear people say this this stuff is it usually just copy and pasted into it or you're like ah that's not really working exactly verbatim what that person said let me revise a little bit to tailor it to this other idea that i have often it's like whatever it meant to you in the moment like somebody will say something and whether i take it verbatim or not it's just like oh that's just like a lot of times my ideas will come from like i'll think i'll have someone else's song in my head but then I'll realize like, that's not what they were saying. And then I'm like, oh, that's a cool line actually. Fuck, I should write a song about that. Like I thought whatever, you know, mm -hmm. someone was singing this line and I had it in my head and they're like, no, they weren't saying that. And I'm like, oh, I should write a song called that. So I don't know, it just comes from all different. Sometimes it's literal and exact. Sometimes it's like, I had been, I, it's all different too. Like I'll wait, I, like one song on the album, I woke up and was just like, it came to me in like one second and I recorded it. It was recorded by 10 a.m. like on the four track, written and recorded. And then other times it's like I write three lines and a melody and it sits in my phone for three years. And then I come back to it and I try and it fails. And then I eventually one day I'm like, oh, it's supposed to say that. And then I figure it out. The new album is the first time I'll say this, that I feel like I like had a cohesive, like I was stoked enough on a new perspective to where I feel like the whole record's like generally about a similar thing, which is cool to me. Cause I love when an album's like, not a concept, but you can tell someone was in a certain place and has a, a message. A through line. Like a, like yeah. A, yeah. Can I Cause uh, my other album was very pieced together. Like, okay, this song's from four years ago. This I never wrote from high school. This is from recent. That was getting stranger. And then this new one, I'm like, it honestly came from, reading a bunch of shit and then getting into meditation and like just a wider perspective of life. And then that inspired me to write a bunch of songs about different people, like through different people's eyes. Like, I don't know. It just like opened up a big, a bunch of song ideas, not all about just like, none of them are necessarily just about that, but they are, it just like opened me up to a bunch of more ideas that I was psyched on. And that felt like they had a through line. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you do you ever feel like uh like oh this is this is moving in a different direction than I initially anticipated this song to to go into but I'm glad like that this is the result of it or is it usually like ah uh, if it's not what I want it sound like I'm just going to redo it No it happens a lot especially when I bring in friends like when I have Mark play he'll put a totally different beat than what I was hearing over something but I'm like oh fuck that's cool um and I'm super down with that. Or sometimes you like wrote a song for a month and you think it's going to be really slow. And then you try it out with the band live. And it's like, oh, this is actually, we should speed this, like three times as fast. And it'll be like a quick one minute fast song. And you're like, wow, this is cool. So I'm open to it changing and growing. You just can tell, you just have to trust your gut when you're like, cause there'll be changes all the time too, where I'm like, no, I don't like that. Let's do the other thing. You just got to trust your, whatever feels good and know that it's like, how it was supposed to go mm -hmm. have you always been comfortable on stage yeah that's the one thing i feel like i was always comfortable with was just like being a little i feel like when i was younger i was like the oldest one and i was just like a little shit performer kid i would just like dance around and do all that so i, I feel pretty comfortable on stage for sure what makes you uncomfortable within music that's a really good question. I appreciate it. I always try to get one in through through each episode. I say there's got to be one. There's got to be one that really drives it home. Fuck it's it, uncomfortable. One that fucks him up. Um, <laughs> there's got to be one question in there that's going to cancel this guy. Um, yeah, this, I, yeah, that's that's what I'm searching for. <laughs> yeah. Um, fuck. Uh, a lot of things make me really uncomfortable in music, and a lot of it comes down to just like trusting that whatever you wrote is what was supposed to happen and that there's no use in like sitting and re-listening to it or judging it or compare like often i'll finish like right now is like the hardest phase for me because i finished a record 
I trusted it the whole time I was recording it. I didn't judge it. I just like let it out, made it and was like, this is cool. It's whatever. It's what's happening right now. And then afterwards, when I'm like deciding when it should come out, who would like it? Who should I send it to? Who should I put it out with? That's when I'm like, you listen back and you're like, fuck. I wish I did it more like this or like you're just you just get judgmental of your own sound and what came out and that part's kind of uncomfortable and hard to like remember to just that it's done and there's no use like I sh you shouldn't go listen to your shit at all after it's done but this is the only phase where I do is before it's out it's like in this weird prison where it's like not out in the world yet and I can't let it go but it's not in my control to change it anymore and so I just listen to it and I'm like oh fuck I should have done this or what would this guy think of it and it's just like it sucks and then once it's out I'm like fuck it I don't care it's done I'm gonna make the next thing and it's like meant not meant for me anymore but the probably the most uncomfortable point is like not judging and trusting when it's done but it's not out yet yeah and there's some songs that like when you're making, there's times when you really just have to trust yourself or commit to something. And you feel like maybe if I spent 20 more days figuring that line out, that would have been like a hit. And you just have to be like, fuck it. It happened this way, you know? Can't so, be stressed on something. It's like, all right, well, you know, you didn't like it that way. Try right. it another way the next. And then that doesn't leave you depleted from ideas once right. you're ready to work on it. it's like oh yeah i have nothing i'm starting from zero totally yeah it's just finding your own healthy process like i feel like i feel like writing used to be really uncomfortable for me and recording used to be really uncomfortable for me but now that i found something a process that i like and i'm just like not even trying to write a song for anybody else i'm just like letting it happen now that process isn't as like uncomfortable or negative for me and now it's more like the not letting the business side of my head be a dick when I'm about to release stuff. And then once I get that done, I won't give a fuck about anything. So <laughs> just no fucks given. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what we're all trying to to ascend to. Um Mackenzie was on earlier. Yeah. About, about four hours ago when we started now. Uh right. <laughs> right, right when we started recording, and she helps you out as as you've met, previously mentioned with with a lot of your music um and, i mean and you guys and as, as you have alluded to that you guys are, are together does the shared commonality of music kind of bring a different aspect into the relationship to bring you guys closer yeah we have way different relationships with music and it's always going to change too like when we first started dating she was in the wild reeds and was touring nonstop, and she was super busy and was just like in the machine of being in that band because there was a team around them and telling them to write music and put out music and go on tour. And then I feel like after that band kind of stopped playing, she's, um, her relationship with music is more, she's trying to like refigure out what she wants her relationship with music to be. So she, I love her solo music. It's under the name Pet Dress. And she's just, it's cool to see her not take it with a bunch of pressure and just take it really slow and not rely on it being her main. We're both coming out of phases in our life where like music was our main career and like breadwinner thing for us. And um, just both of us trans transitioning into like taking the pressure out of that and just being like, let's just make music when it feels good and when we're inspired to. And she's like pretty good at that and also figuring out like what relationship with music is healthy for her like when is it too stressful and when does she just need a break and I think she's coming more and more into being comfortable with it again but it was just a while where she just like didn't want to make it a lot and she but she also loves being in my band so it's cool because we both get to like play the lead role and the support role in our each of our projects so she writes songs less often probably, but they're really meaningful. And I get jealous of like, fuck, that really is a song that means a whole lot and means a lot to you and like has been building up in you for six months. And then I just write all the time, but I, to me, they're not as like special, <laughs> but she, um, and then I get to play in her band and try to write a lead guitar line or 
try to help out with a chorus. And then when I play live with her, it's like no pressure and you don't have to think about anything. And then same thing for her, like while she builds back up her relationship with music and starts writing more songs and stuff, she also just loves going and playing my shit because there's no pressure and she can just like roll on the ground and play guitar and not worry about how it looks or how it feels or whatever. Um, so I think we both really enjoy like getting to be each other's support on stage and in the band. And then also having the support of like, when she's writing a song, she could bounce it off of me and I can bounce it off of her. And um, I think it definitely makes us closer. And also just like leaving each other's space to be like, I like not being in a band band together. Cause then we'd be like, our identities are wrapped up in what we release and whatever, all these different things. But she can make her own decisions and take as long as she wants or put as many songs out as she wants. And I can do the same thing. And we're just there to help each other out, but we're not controlling the same child together. I think it's, that's what's healthy about it for us and why we're able to like do it so often and everything. Sure. Is it, is it good for you to kind of take a step back while performing with her? It's like, all right, I'm not leading this, but I'm yeah. just supporting this. Right. It's like challenging. Cause I just love, like, like I was saying, like rambling and shit on the mic and, and just like used to being like, this is my band. So it's, it's funny trying to figure out, okay, what's the best like version of me to bring to stage to where I'm like still making, helping to make the show fun but not like at all trying to overshadow or be the lead of this. And it's cool. It's a fun exercise. Like I love being in her band and not having the pressure. Um, and then she steps into a different role that I don't see when we play my shows, which is cool. Um, so yeah. Exercising two, two sides, two sides yeah. of a person. I feel like it's always cool to like keep your stuff balanced to like, with anything if you're making music you should also probably go find some other hobbies so it's not the only thing you're thinking about um and so to have like two sides two relationships with music like as a support role and as a main role it kind of like it's it make keeps it healthy you know sure absolutely yeah it's it's yeah you gotta kind of have a a refreshing side of it if you will like or, or even if it's not a, even in music or or whatever your hobby is i mean this isn't just it's not just uh, crucial for musicians, but also for whatever artistic venture you're in, have another thing that you're interested in as well that you could kind of just take a step back and be like in, involved with and then totally. have, have that take take over some time so you could take a whatever refresher or reflective Balance session. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. It seems that you would be a great musician, Grady. You really understand all these things that we're oh, talking thanks, about. Oh, thanks, man. I'm going to try it out. You should really pursue it. <laughs> I only do karaoke right now, but yeah. No, it's good, dude. Get, go down there for the KJs. That's a that's a karaoke jockey. By the oh, way. hell yeah. So, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's sick. sick. That's just the terminology that we use in the field. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you and Mackenzie are engaged right now, correct? Yeah, that's my fiancy. Good. <laughs> yeah that's 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 good to that you guys finally because how, how how long has it been since you guys had like four years and some change that's that's it it's about the time that's a lot that's it's a good chunk of chunk of time there yeah partners in rock and roll now and roll my dog's looking at me from across the room <laughs> waiting for me to talk about her my daughter's been a big part of the relationship as well <laughs> are, you um, are you excited about getting married yeah, we're psyched. We're going to get married in Joshua Tree and we're going to have like an all-star band of all of our friends um, from all our different times be like an invite-only karaoke live band for like an hour. So I'm psyched. And you're going to have a, a special KJ, which is going to also be the the, the, the Yeah, minister. and they're going to sing something, but we don't know what yet. That'll be good. Now Down the house. Maybe a nine-minute Thunder Road. I mean, just just bring it all back home. Maybe we'll make it eighteen minutes because it's our night. They have to. They can't. They can't leave. You know? No, that legally they cannot. It's like that's, yeah. this is my time. You can't. I will sue them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will um, dog the internet you, and go after them. <laughs> do you prefer if when you attend a wedding to it for it to be a DJ or a live band? 
I don't know. I've never been to many live band weddings, so I would say DJ, but I think what we're going to try to do is a little bit of an in-between, mm. you know, nobody, like, it's, it's, it's going to be like a rotating cat. It's going to be like karaoke, invite only karaoke. And then we'll also just like, they can't do that forever. So there'll be DJ too. That'd or not, DJ. well, it'll just be a Spotify playlist or something, you know? So yeah, it'll be good. Mm-hmm. Um, we're psyched. It's going to have our band be the backing band and they're crazy. We got a good group right now of like friends that are in our, in the band and it's pretty wild and f- reckless and fun. So it'll be a funny, if they all stay sober, it'll be a really fun show. <laughs> what do you want people to take away from the music that you make? Just to not take it all too seriously. You got a little bit of time on this trip around, around this life, around this son of a life, this life that we, this son that we call this trip that we call life. And uh, don't get, don't get too wrapped up in it. Yeah. That's a whole lot more out there. That's Let's perfect. light up. That's awesome. Grady, I appreciate you sitting down with me and doing this. I'm so glad that we were able to, to, to hash it out and, and, and get you on here. I really do appreciate it. Likewise, dude. Where are you in Orange County? You're Belinda. Well, next time we play down there, I'll hit you up. Please do. Um, but before I let you go, I like to wrap it up with some promo. So you can find Grady's music everywhere on all streaming platforms, whatever the people listen to. That's that's where you can find you, right? That's where yeah. that's where they can they can go ahead and find and that's Grady Strange music. And it's 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 fantastic. And um they can support you directly through the band camp, right? Is that the best place to you yeah. know be be, be so. given, given your given your dollars and that's gradystrange.bandcamp.com that's a good place and you could buy the merch you got a lot of things to plug here <laughs> and you could buy the merch at gradystrangematerialitems.bigcartel.com oh bow, 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 bow. you're nailing it and uh, i mean i'm about to about to tank it right now but um professional. we'll see yeah i mean uh, clearly yeah very professional over to Zoom. <laughs> it's just me um stay up to date with news and shows and tours and all that that good stuff wedding pictures definitely going to be on there from the j tree <laughs> and, and the kj and all, and all all that good stuff at grady strange dot mp3 on instagram yeah there's gonna be a record soon it's done i don't know when it's coming but it'll be soon that'll be good and you can keep up to date with that through following the instagram is that the best place probably that's right that's the only social media i check i think good deal so that, that'll be posted i'm I'm looking forward to it man yeah getting, oh, getting yeah. stranger was good dude and we'll, we'll see we'll, Thanks, we'll, bro. we'll see how strange it gets <laughs> oh it's only the beginning <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate it, man all right i'm gonna stop recording yeah, this and I'll, I'll talk to you in a minute all right all right sick all right thank you man